What's up, future respiratory therapists? Hey, in this video, we're talking about environmental exposures. We oftentimes talk about how we take the best care of our patients, but in this video, we're talking about how to take the best care of yourself. Let's dive in. All right, so as I stated in the intro, we're talking about how to take care of yourself in this video. You as a respiratory therapist or any other healthcare provider. What we have to be aware of is what are environmental exposures. And we need to talk about them so you can be aware of them as well as know how to protect yourself from them. So the first question is, is what is environmental exposure? Well, it's a simple answer. Environmental exposure is when you provide any type of care to a sick patient <clears throat> that ends up exposing you to a hazard associated with that care. So what does that mean, Joe? Well, primarily for this video, what I'm going to be talking about is aerosol exposure. We recognize that any time we aerosolize medications, that there are aerosols that are produced and put out into the environment. Now, there's two things you need to know about these aerosols that are put out into the environment that you are now breathing. One, we know that aerosol carries bacteria and viruses, and it's a great carrier of pathogens. So, you now, standing at the bedside while there is aerosol being produced, you are now exposed to that. You may inhale any of those pathogens. That's number one. Number two is the fact that you, standing at the bedside, nebulizing medications, specifically, let's talk about albuterol, it has been proven that environmental exposure to albuterol aerosol leads to an increased sensitivity of your airways that has a reduced response to albuterol. So in other words, by breathing in the aerosol of the albuterol that you are providing to a patient, you are now at a higher risk for reactive airway disease due to that exposure. These are facts. That's what environmental aerosol is. Now, the question is, why do you care? Why should you care? Well, the easy answer to that is, is because you recognize that you are only as effective to your patients as you are from a health perspective. If you're not well, then how do you actively take care of your patients? That's why you care. You are in this profession for a long time. And it would be not a good situation if you were not able to fulfill your job because you were sick, because you were exposed to these environmental pathogens, because now you have a reactive airway disease that presents itself often and you now have to manage yourself instead of being able to take care of other patients. That's why it matters and that's why you should care. So what we're going to do now is we're going to take a look at this. I want you to see what I am talking about when I talk about aerosol exposure. When we give a treatment with a mask or a mouthpiece, there are particles that come into the air. Let's take a look at that. And we're also going to look at a potential solution to preventing or at least reducing this aerosol exposure. Alrighty, so I hope you're able to see the amount of aerosol particles that were 
exposed through and outside of the mask, especially during exhalation. These aerosol particles came out and into the environment, and then you as a healthcare provider are now breathing these aerosol particles in. This may be drugs, this may also be airborne pathogens from your patient, because let's face it, we don't know what they have. And so it's an increased risk to you. Now the whole title of this is protect yourself from environmental hazards and that's what we're talking about. Now what I wanna show you here is a simple option that might can reduce these uh, exposures to these environmental pathogens. So what I have here is called the safety filter. This is created by Groman Medical and it's very simple. We just peel off an adhesive strip right here and we place it onto the mask over the exhaust port. It looks just like this. Now you're thinking to yourself, okay, there's another one over here. That's why I'm gonna take another filter and I'm going to use it on the other side. So we're gonna put this right here and we're gonna place this piece right over here. Now this is how simple this is. We now have a filtered aerosol mask so that all drug aerosol that comes into the mask is contained within the mask so that when the patient inhales, they receive more of that medication. And then during exhalation, all expired drugs and pathogens are going to be filtered out as they come back through those exhaust ports. Let's take a look and see what that looks like. Alrighty, so I hope you maybe were able to tell the difference between the unfiltered versus the filtered uh, aerosol environmental exposure ha hazards that present with an unfiltered mask versus a filtered mask. Now, of course, you know, you can protect yourself various ways. If you work in the ER, maybe you want to wear an N95 for all of your patients. I think you should. I think it's a, a smart idea to protect yourself against all pathogens that might be in a room for a patient that we have no idea what their underlying problem is. So think about that, but here's our summary. Remember, aerosol carries pathogens. Whatever your patient has during times of nebulized medications and aerosol production, you are going to be at risk for inhaling those pathogens because aerosol is a magnificent carrier for pathogens. We also know that aerosolized medications, they present hazards and potential harm. We know that the more aerosol that respiratory therapists and other healthcare providers inhale during times of treatment leads to an overall long-term desensitization of the airways to that medication, as well as an increased responsivity to pathogens and air, air, airborne borne irritants. And so essentially, the more medication we inhale as we administer it, then the further at risk we are to reducing our overall health as a healthcare practitioner. And this is a problem because you're only as good for your patients as you are as yourself. In other words, if you can't breathe, how are you going to take care of your patients who can't breathe? So we have to protect ourselves in this environment where aerosolized pathogens and medications exist, we need to protect ourselves. And last thing is just take precautions, whatever that is. Like I said, N95, a surgical mask, whatever it might be, uh, maybe it's the, the, the safety filter from, from Groman Medical. Whatever it is, remember, protect yourself when you're taking care of patients because, because uh, it's imperative that you were on top of your game and in the best health for yourself so that you can provide the best care to your patients. Now there are several references for this. Um, here's where they are. If you would like a copy of this, send me an email. I'll give you that here in just a little bit. But these are references re related to occupational exposure to respiratory irritants and COPD. 
uh, aerosol generating procedures and respiratory virus transmission, uh, respiratory protection for healthcare workers, and then occupational asthma in healthcare workers. And, and what we see is that the evidence overwhelmingly shows what we've been saying. Exposure to these environmental hazards can cause harm to yourself. You need to protect yourself. So uh, that's uh, environmental hazards. That's hazards associated with aerosolized medications. This is where you can find me. I'm on Instagram, at Respiratory Coach. Come find me over there. Also, TikTok, at Respiratory Coach. You're here on YouTube right now. Stay subscribed. If you haven't already subscribed, please do so. Hit the like button. Leave me a comment. Uh, LinkedIn, at Joe Lewis. I would love for you to come join me over there. Lots of exciting things happening on LinkedIn. And then finally, respiratorycoach at gmail.com. Send me an email if you'd like to further this conversation. You can always join my texting platform, which is 817-968-7035. Send a text to that number and you will subscribe to receive occasional motivational, inspirational, educational content from me just so that we can continue to um, you know, progress and inspire and, and motivate each other to be the very, very best respiratory therapist that we can be. Now, if you want more information on the Groman Medical Safety Filter, check out this link right here for more information on that. In the meantime, remember, average is easy. Don't be it.